Then we need to run these tools. This is sort of the analytics. These are um, the transformations of filters that convert data to information, to knowledge. Um, and I've listed various tools, regression, biostatistics, neural nets, Bayesian networks, uh, support vector machines, classifying algorithms, clustering algorithms, dimension reduction algorithms that go from large dimensions to small, artificial intelligence, semantic web. These are all um, terms describing uh, areas of, um, of scholarly work which need to be brought together for in this field. Well, here's just a slightly out of place, a particular example. I pointed out there were 70 petabytes of um, medical imagery and the, that one of the drivers of this field is, is, uh, is patient records. And another one is uh, the um, study of social networks such as in the abstract graphs that you get from the, from the internet, whether it be linking sites together or people together. I note here that some of the data can be thought of as vectors. They live in spaces, they have distances. Some are high dimension, and some of them don't live in metric spaces at all. Uh, the good example of the latter is um, gene sequences. Those sequences, each each um, each um, measure, each uh, sequence usually has a different number of members, and there is no natural vector space to view them all in. I noted that um, already that the Large Hadron Collider is mainly a rather simple approach histogramming. It could use uh, nifty technology like MapReduce, uh, but um, that's typically not how it's done at the moment. This comment about MapReduce being a larger use than MPI is just to note that in academia, MPI dominates um, the message passing interface, is a, a, is a technology to allow one to do parallel computing. It's sort of a dominant technology. But in the commercial world, MapReduce is a much larger, of much larger importance. And if you look at the so the parallel computing done totally is dominated by the commercial world of MapReduce. And then you could say that Google and Bing and Yahoo and Amazon, these are the largest data analytics there is, and we need to learn from them. Other areas of interest are time series. Uh, you can get time series from earthquake sensors. You can get time series from Twitter, time series in the stock market. And you can look for patterns in those time series. That's sometimes called pattern informatics, an interesting area, which is actually a pretty old area. People are often looking for patterns, like for earthquakes. People said that dogs barking is a signal of earthquakes. So that's pattern informatics. Uh, not, there may not be a correct conclusion, but uh, it's an example of patterns that people think exist, or at least some people think exist. Um, so we need to do image processing. That's an important example. Uh, those image processings look at come from climate simulations. Uh, we, they come from medicine. They come from the uh, defense and applications where we're looking for uh, vehicles and things like that. And there's some areas such as radar informatics and pathology informatics, which actually use the same image processing algorithms. And so we have single algorithms crossing many fields. One other application area which we've not really discussed is financial decision support. <coughs> Although we have discussed the marketing issues and mentioned the fraud detection is one, one aspect of this. That's typically an anomaly detection. You're looking for small outliers. And the other one mentioned here is um, uh, the one we have recommend the systems to map users to books and films and things like that. Uh, this slide here um, is, and the following one makes a point that if we look, go into, if we look not at data science, but what I call computational science, the area of simulation, we noted that uh, roughly equal contributions to the performance of the whole process came from computer power and algorithms, namely uh, the reason we are, we're able to do bigger simulations is due to more computer power. But it's also equally due to the fact that the algorithms are better. This is illustrated on this slide here from David Keyes, uh, 2004. It's from just one particular application area. You can get similar slides in other areas. The blue line here from uh, 1980 
four through uh, 2004 is the um, improvement due to Moore's law of computer performance. But the red and the green lines are the actual performance seen of the algorithm. And they come from improved technology in the software or, or in the algorithms used, uh, linear solvers, uh, using higher order elements in the approximation scheme, and using uh, implicit or semi-implicit algorithms are better than explicit algorithms. And then the red line is more physics. If you use better physics, you're going to get better results. So by putting better, better applied math, that's algorithms, better physics, combined with Moore's law, you get the total improvement, which is some factor of uh, between 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 6th. Whereas the um, improvement due to computers in this particular field was just a factor of 100. So that's a reasonably useful uh, thing to bear in mind. But if we go to the data intensive area, we don't quite see this so much that um, um, we have improved algorithms. Some algorithms like information retrieval have really just um, um, been revolutionized by new algorithms. but Often, like in bioinformatics, we're using BLAST, which was a very important algorithm, very, very brilliant idea. But it's an, it is not sort of being improved, and we're using libraries like R, which do not necessarily have the most optimal algorithm. And the issues of using graphics processing units and parallel computing, which are well understood in simulation, are not so clearly understood in the data science area.